Thank you, Tinch. Appreciate you, brother. God bless you. Well, let's get to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I appreciate the Lord's goodness. Where we on? All right. I believe we hooked up here. Amen. Aren't you glad you saved tonight? Amen. I was thinking about how good God's been to us this very day, and it's, it's just wonderful, isn't it? Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 7 tonight. Genesis chapter 7. We're going to look at a few things about uh, Noah and the ark. We're going to talk about the preach on this thought tonight, seven more days of grace. Seven more days of grace. I'm glad God's got some grace for us today. Amen. Amen. I'll read verse 7, then we'll deal with some other verses in chapter 6 and other verses in uh, chapter 7. But I appreciate the Lord. Appreciate being here. I've been a praying that we just have a wonderful, wonderful meeting. Amen. Amen. And ask God to help us this week. I'm looking forward to something from my heart. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible says in verse 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And then let me go over here and, and look in verse 4, and then we'll deal with the verses as we get to them later. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Heavenly Father, we thank you again tonight for the precious Word of God. I pray, God, you'd help me to preach. I need a fresh touch from you, Father, tonight. Dear God, we realize without you, we can't do anything. And Lord, I pray, God, tonight for the power of God, the Spirit of God, to work in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we look at our text tonight, I believe 120 years before God spoke these words of this text in verse 7, Noah had received the most devastating message or communication that ever came from heaven to earth. We see no man up to that time, and I think no man since, has ever received such a message from God. We see God said that on account of the wickedness of the world, that He was going to destroy the world by water. We could read about that back in chapter 6, verse 5 through 7. And then we see, we read in verse 13 and 14 and 17, and notice what it says. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through, me, through, the, through, them, through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, and room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. This is the fashion which thou shalt make it of, the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A winder shall thou make, and we know the story to the ark, and a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof with lower seconds and third stories shall thou make it. And as we look at this, we see as Noah received the message from God, over here, for the Lord said to him to come. He said, I'm going to destroy the earth, as I've already said. But we want to look at the results from the message that Noah received. We see the results. Noah obeyed God. As I read over in verse 22 of chapter 6, it said, This did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. As we looked in chapter 7, we said, And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Him over in verse four of chapter or verse five or six of chapter five of chapter seven. And so we see Noah obeyed God. We see he didn't try to get out of it. He didn't try to get by it or didn't try to turn away from it and think he had a better idea or a better plan than God. He just obeyed God. Boy, that's the way we ought to live today, just obey God. And so as we look at this tonight, Noah, we see, believed God. We see he did not, uh, we see he told him he began to build according to all the specs that God 
had given him. I see there God told Noah just how big to make the ark and just what kind of materials to use, as I've already read. I thought about it. He didn't tell him to put a steering wheel in it. He didn't tell him to put a sail on it because he didn't need any of that to guide it because this big ark was going to be guided by the mighty hand of God. Aren't you glad today that God takes his mighty hand and guides and directs us along life's way? I thought about how the pray things of God and we speak think about God and how good God's been to us and how we're guided by the unseen hand of God. Aren't you glad today for the precious Holy Ghost that guides and directs our life as a child of God? But we see Noah believed God. And I believe that every time Noah drove a nail into that ark, it was a warning to those who were standing around watching him work. I believe every time he drove a nail, it was echoed uh, with the hammer was echoed. Noah was saying every time he hit a nail, Noah was saying, I believe God. He said, I'm just going to build according to the way that God has told me to build. And every time he hit a nail, I believe he was echoing, Noah believed God. Aren't you glad tonight that we can believe God? Aren't you glad tonight that God is the master of all? Aren't you glad tonight that we he knows exactly what we need tonight? I don't understand everything that goes on in my life and sometimes God will speak to me about something and I, it'll just seem altogether crazy to me, but I just believe God. And if God says do it, God knows what we need. Aren't you glad tonight that he knows what we need here at Almeda tonight? And he knows what we need tomorrow night. And he'll know what we need next year and the year after and the year after. I believe God. And Noah just drove the nails and started building according to the word of God. Boy, I thank God for the precious word of God tonight. He obeyed and believed God. When we think about it tonight, we see if those who were standing around watching there, watching the, those who, who would not believe God, there was many probably standing around and, and they wouldn't believe God. Uh, if they would have repented and cried out to God, God would have heard their cry and would have spared them while Noah was building this ark. For 120 years, he was working on this ark. And then God gave him seven more days of grace. Hallelujah, aren't you glad God tonight is a God of grace and a God of mercy, but he's also a God of judgment and a God of just God. But I'm glad tonight for the grace and mercy that God has given us, amen. amen. So we see there, but they, these many would not believe and therefore they would not cry out for mercy. We live many will not believe God. You can go out and talk to them about their soul and they just won't believe God. I was talking to an old boy the other day that was lost and he got to crying and telling me about his sister. He said, my sister's in a bad way and he said, for years she's just been like a hermit and, and wouldn't even come out of the house and said she'd been having problems and he said she never left the house for eight years and he said she come out and started coming out a little bit and, and started going out and, and and getting out a little bit and coming around the family and he said boy I felt so sorry for her cause all she's been through and he said her teeth's gone and he said honey I'll tell you what I'll do if you'll just go get you some new teeth implants every what you want I'll just pay for them and he started crying and I said brother let me tell you the tenderness you showing to your sister now this is a lost man I said that's how good and tender God is to you thank God God's wanting to do something for you if we'll just believe God and we see there he wants to do something he's a tender God and I took that thing and that old boy was a crying and, and weeping about his sister and I told him I said boy I'm glad one day God said to me I got a sin debt I couldn't pay it and he said she can't afford anything he said but I'm willing to pay but I said I've got one thank God that he give you more than a new set of teeth hallelujah he'll give you a new life glory to God a new heart and he'll do it all for nothing and you won't have to pay a thing glory to God. Boy, I got to thinking about the goodness of God. And I want to tell you today, we can believe God and know that God's going to do things His way and they'll be right. Hallelujah. But I believe those that were standing around when Noah was driving that nail and said, I'm building this ark according to God's standards and according to God's spec. I believe if any of them would have cried out that day, they would have been saved. Amen. Right. Right. My gracious alive. I feel like preaching a little bit tonight. 
And, and no doubt there were many who was probably mocking old Noah. We've all heard that. I, I don't have anything to really prove it, but no doubt they probably was. They'd probably, uh, there'd never been any rain. Uh, they'd probably said, my grace of life, what is this rain business? What is this water business? No doubt they say Noah must be wrong because he's in the minority. Amen. Uh, but can you imagine a bunch of reporters if they could come and interview Noah? Could you imagine that CNN? They would have portrayed him as a bad man, as a strange man. They said he would. They would have said he's a right winger. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God, but Noah didn't care about all that. He just kept right on to working, kept right on to believing. Look, people, I'm telling you today, we live in a day and time where people will mock you. They won't care about you, and they don't care about God, but we can just keep on to believe in God, just keep on to building according to the way God said, just keep on to preaching the Word of God, keep on to telling it. Glory to God, keep on going down the road for God. Because we know that God has told us what to do. And so we see, my, my, Noah just kept right on obeying God and believing God. He just kept building and preaching for 120 years. Boy, someone has said that Noah must have been deaf or he could not have stood the sneers and the ridicule. But if he is deaf to the voice of man, he sure wasn't deaf to the voice of God. Boy, the God can speak to you. The Holy Ghost can speak to you a whole lot louder than man can. But we see there he had heard God. He had believed God. My grace is alive. I'm telling you, sometimes we, we'll get, we have to get sort of shaken and uh, disturbed before we'll believe God. Aren't you glad God governs our life? God disturbs us at times to get us to Him. I remember when God disturbed me. <laughs> I'd been raised in church, but I didn't believe nothing about it. I'd never been saved. Uh, God had dealt with me years ago, as I've told you when I was a young boy. But then when I got out, I, I didn't want God, didn't believe God, didn't believe anything about the Word of God. But God come and disturbed my life. Glory to God. And when He disturbed me, He showed me, thank God, what I needed and, and who He was. Hallelujah. Thank God. Aren't you glad one day he disturbed you and showed you you was under conviction, showed you you was a sinner and got you under Holy Ghost conviction. He disturbed you that way. I couldn't sleep for night. But glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the grace of God that moved in my heart that night. Amen. Praise God. Woo. My, my. And wash me. I'm more like old Terry. Wash me. That's a little bit cleaner than being washed. Worse is a lot cleaner. Boy, I like that. I like that washing business. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hey, hallelujah. It's grace that saved you. God came to you. He said, Come. My gracious alive. Can you imagine? After 120 years, the ark was finished. The day of grace was about to be over. Noah had obeyed God and believed God and had been faithful to God. Now, notice the response from the master. He spoke directly to Noah in verse 1 of chapter 7. Notice what he said. And the Lord said to Noah, Come down all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Noah had heard the voice 120 years before, and the same familiar voice was speaking to him again. Noah could not forget the voice. He had a familiar ring. Hallelujah. Thank God that the voice of God got a familiar ring in your heart. Amen. I've never heard him audibly, but thank God I've heard him in my heart. My, 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 you remember when the blind Bartimaeus was or the blind beggar was sitting over there by the roadside of begging and, and the crowd come through and he'd been sitting there days of begging uh, all the time to make a living just sitting there uh, trusting the people to throw him a little crumb or throw him a little change. Uh, boy, that day when Jesus and Nazareth was in the crowd and they said, boy, when he come, he couldn't see anybody, but he knew there was a little something different about the sound of the crowd. 
Praise God, aren't you glad when Jesus comes in? That's a little bit of sound, different sound of the crowd. Hallelujah's going here, glory to God's going there, glory to God. And he said, who, oh, what is this? He said, he said, son of David, have mercy. He said, hold your pain. He said, son of David, the Bible said, cried that much the louder. And he said, bring him to him. Thank God in what you see. He gave him blood, saved him, and he went away leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. What well, was different? The sound of the crowd. Jesus was in the crowd. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. There's different rain. There's a different tone when he's around. Once God speaks to you, you'll have no problem recognizing his call or his voice. Oh, my gracious life. Because you know why? His voice rings through the soul. Rings through the soul. Boy, aren't you glad God disturbed you one day? You know why He disturbed you to bring you to Him? Hey, he's, well, He governs our life whether we like it or not. He's the governing God. It is said the word come occurs about 1,900 times in the Bible. And this is the first time it means salvation. He said come and thou and all thy house. See, God spoke to Noah and said for him and his family to come into the ark. He is also instructing him on bringing the animals in also. I'm not going to read all that because of time. And then God showed Noah something else as, we, as he was speaking to him. He showed Noah his sovereign grace. Notice what he said in verse four. For yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. My gracious alive, when 120 years is up, God gave the world seven more days of grace. Think about it, he said, yet seven days. He said, yet seven days and I'm gonna destroy. If there had been a cry of repentance during those seven days, I believe it would have been heard. But there was none. Think about this. God extended grace for 120 years and now he is long suffering he gives uh, them seven more days, but no one repented or believed. He said, yet seven days is coming to an end. He gave them another warning. Yes, sir. Amen. Seven more days. Think about this. Just think about it. What if God were to say to someone here tonight, seven more days and judgment's coming to your life. Yeah. Boy, when I got saved, I didn't believe I could make it. Another day. I felt like if I didn't get saved then God, I was going to be taken out of here. Boy, I was living a life that I knew where I was headed. I was headed to hell if I went out of here. Boy, you ever notice nowadays, I've been telling people, call me and say, brother, I need you to come help me with the funeral. And I, somebody say, well, I'm old friends. And I'll say, all right. They say, oh, he got saved right there before he got out of here. Well, I said, well, I don't know about that. I'll come help you. But I can't say with this lifestyle of how he lived because I've got no, I don't know about it. I, all we can go by is what a man says. And I'll say, he said he got saved. I'll say he got saved. But thank God, aren't you glad when God deals with your heart and God does disturbs you and shows you that God you think about all those days that he's extended grace to you I thought about when I was under conviction as a 11 year old boy and God extended grace to me till I was 32 years old before he ever spoke to me like any and I was saved after that glory to God what did he do he was extending grace he was long suffering to me hallelujah and he was to you and if you're here tonight, God's extended grace to you. And you're sitting here tonight uh, so you can hear the word of God, so you can get saved by the grace of God. If you'll just cry out to God, if the Spirit of God's disturbed you, you can be saved tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. My gracious alive. What a God we serve. Amen. My gracious alive. Mm hmm. If he were to say to you, got seven more days, would you repent? Would you believe God? If you knew for sure that seven days was all you had left, what would you do? How do you know that you've got seven days? There's a dear preacher friend of mine went to school with me. I preached three or four revivals for him at New Buffalo Baptist Church in Grover, North Carolina. 
I'd been trying to get a hold of him. He, he'd left there and was pastoring in Kings Mountain. And somebody called me. They said, Brother, is this the same Dale Angel that you know? He used to come preach revivals for me every now and then. And they said, Man, he is on his way to a meeting. Car turned in front of him, he's gone. And I thought, My grace, that can't be the same one. I hope and pray it's not. Not that I want anybody. But I got to thinking about it. On his way to preach the Word of God, never thought when he left his little family yeah. hey. that he wasn't going to be coming back. Going to preach a revival. That was it. You know, there's so many people tonight that's lost and undone. And they don't know if they're going to be here tomorrow. And the Holy Ghost of God can deal with that soul, deal with that heart. And they'll sit there and they will not do business with God. And you may not have another opportunity. That's why he says, when the Spirit of God's are drawing, you better get in. Yeah, that's right. My gracious alive. He be there. Yet seven days. Yet seven days. Yet seven days. Oh. God spoke to Noah about himself and his family getting into the ark. Then he spoke to Noah, showing him his sovereign grace. And notice what Noah did again. In verse 5, he surrendered to the voice of God again. See, the whole thing is, God spoke, Noah believed. Noah never had a problem obeying or believing God. After Noah loaded the ark according to the will of God, in verse 6 through 15, then God shut him in, the Bible says in verse 16. And God shut the door. My, my, my. Think about it. Can you just imagine what those scoffers were probably saying when it began to rain? They thought they might have said, Oh no, isn't this crazy after all? Right, oh my gracious life, there might be some something to what he's been saying to us all these years. Just a witness in him building the ark. You imagine come by Noah, what you doing? Building the ark. Why? Because God says he's going to destroy this earth. What a devastating message. He said, God's going to destroy it, and he told me to build this. He said, he's going to load up a load. Thank God, aren't you glad? One day, God's are coming back, and he's going to get a boat loaded together, as preacher Vernon Hams used to say. He said, he's coming back to get a boat loaded together. I remember when I was a boy, he said, son, God's are coming back one day to get a boat load ready to go. Are you going to get eaten? But he said he's building this thing. And they said, ha oh, ha, what's he talking about? You ever talk to somebody and they just scarf you? Yeah. They make fun of it. Say you're crazy. Let me say this. Throw this in. Did you know there will not be one atheist in hell? There will not be one atheist in hell. Oh, imagine he said something of what he's been saying all these years. I imagine somebody might even have been uh, uh, pound, pounding on the ark saying, let me in, I meant to get on board. I meant to repent. I wanted to, but I, I've been so busy. I wanted to do it today, but company came by. What's wrong with inviting them to church? Amen. Oh my, but I loved the Lord and even wanted to help Noah build the ark, but I had so many other things I thought I had to do. Oh, some said, I don't believe old Noah's crazy as we thought. You don't have to rawhide somebody to get them saved. You know, I told you probably before, first man that come to my door, not on the door, went to me, he said, I wouldn't come by and tell you. I said, okay. He said, you're going to hell. <laughs> like I didn't know that. I said, well, brother, if you don't want to go with me, I'd suggest you leave. I mean, that's really some way to come to a lost man's house and tell him you rock on the door and go to the door and he'd say, you're going to hell. I, there was a time when you need to tell that. I'm not crazy. 
But thank God one day an old boy come by the house and started talking on the door, me and Terry good. He'd say, I just wanted to come by and see if he'd be like tell you what Jesus done for me. Yeah. Yeah, sir. I said, Come on in. <laughs> and he started telling us about what Jesus done for him. Yeah. I didn't get saved then, but he'd come by every Saturday morning. His brother lived next to me. He knocked on the door and said, just wanted to come back and say, hey, I told you what Jesus done for me. And then he finally said, I want to tell you what Jesus will do for y'all. <laughs> the same thing he done for me. And I knew him. He'd been a rough customer. And then he said, and I wanted and he, he didn't. That's about all he'd say, talk to us, and then he'd leave. He'd come back by there in the end, and he said, now I've been telling you what Jesus done for me and what he'd do for you. Now I need to tell you what's going to happen if you don't know Jesus. And he said, Hail. Do you know that really? I appreciate it. And I thought about that first man that come. Boy, there's no boy I led to the Lord and I mean he'd been a roughing. And I'd just stop where he's at, I'd go by his place there and I'd just put my arm around him. I'd go in there and say, Brother, God loves you. I'd leave. I'd say, God loves you. Leave. First time. And he said, God loves me. <laughs> you know how to do. He said, Did God love you? I said, Yeah. He saved me. <laughs> I'd be going up the road and I'd see his car and I'd pull in and I'd say, Come by to you again. The Holy Ghost said to you, Jesus loves you. He said, well, I appreciate it. I said, God got a little hook in him now. I appreciate you telling me that. Yeah. Amen. Kept on. I didn't know what I was doing. One Saturday morning, about 8 o'clock, me and Terry were sitting there eating breakfast. Phone rang. I said, he said, Brother Marty. He said, Marty, he ain't called me brother. He said, you know, you told me that God loved me. He said, I've been up since 2 o'clock this morning wanting to call you. Said You said God loved me and saved me and changed me. Are you telling me the truth? And I said, yeah. He said, can you come to my house? <laughs> Woo! Hello, can I come? I got there, he's already saved. He just said, I just want you to know if I said, ask him to write. I said, what, yeah? He said, I said, I'm a low down sinner. I'm going to hell. And you've been dealing with me. I've been saying, he can't sleep. God stirred him, disturbed. He said, Marty said, you love me and you'd save me if I'd call on. And he said, I said, I need to be saved, Lord. I said, why? Well, he said, I ain't never been like that before in my entire life. Things look different already. He got in. Amen, About a day later, a sister called me. <laughs> she said, you ain't going to believe this. I already told. I already knew what she was going to say. Said he got in the car, come over to my house, and told me, said, God save me. Amen. <laughs> And I used to go in the place, and them boys didn't care if the preachers. Of course, I, I ain't much used to. You know, they gonna cuss. They thank God don't hear moving preacher. That's good for them to respect you. I'd go in there where he'd be standing. There'd be H's. And I went in there. He's sitting there, and I went in there and said, "Just wanted to come by and give you this little Bible." And them boys started up, and he said, "Hey, we don't have that kind of talking in here no more." Yeah. They said, what you done to him? I said, I ain't done nothing but God has. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! He got in. Come in. Praise God. Wouldn't it be good tonight? Some old sinner and God say this like he did to know his family. Come on in. The ark's ready. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Glory to God. <laughs> Lord. Just believe God. Just obey God. Oh. 
some of Noah's neighbors might even have come by and said, Noah, let us in. You know us. We're your next door neighbor. But Noah had to say, God has shut the door. I can't open it. If I could, I would, but I can't. As much as Noah would have loved to open the door, he could not. It was out of his hand. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. See, that old rich man cried out in hell, but he cried out too late. Cried out too late. My, my, my. What a mess, mess, blessing. You know, as much as we'd like to save someone, we can't. When the door is shut, there's no hope. See, their cry for mercy was too late. The door of grace was closed. They had been in the 120 years and he come back and said, yet seven days. Grace extended. Their last hour had come. God had pleaded with them through Noah for the last time. God had invited them to come, but they had mocked at the invitation. The hand of grace was extended, but they rejected it. Dear friend of mine came to church the first message I preached after I was called to preach at my home church. I was about halfway in the message. You know how when you first preach your first message that you have a bunch of notes. If you could preach them all, you can't even see them. You're so nervous you'd probably preach three hours. I'd been in my message about halfway through it and I preached the whole message in 20 minutes. So you can tell how long I'd been in it. My friend jumped up and tore out the back door of the church. Run! I went over to his house and I said, Brother, I said, Buddy, name was Buddy. I said, I noticed you left church what was wrong. I knew what it was. God was a disturbing his heart. There had been some good singing testimony before I got up and tried to preach. He said, I couldn't take that, God. He said, I'll tell you something. He said, it bothered me. I said, good. He said, good. I said, yeah. See, I just been sort of, it's good if somebody can come to church and be lost and come long, long. I want them to come long as they come, but you don't want them to get too comfortable around there. Amen. The Holy Ghost quits disturbing me in trouble. He said, I said, well, why wouldn't you get saved? He said, I just can't. He said, I was a boy raised up in the First Baptist Church in Charlotte. He said, I, I had gotten some trouble with this form school. He said, I come back to church and wouldn't nobody have nothing to do with him. So he using that excuse all him. I said, brother, how old was you then? He said, 13 or 14. I said, my gosh, Ben, you 40-something years old. You going to die and go to hell? Because of somebody done that to you, when God has dealt with your soul, God's extended grace to you. I said, don't make a flip what nobody else believes. God opened the door. He said, come. He said, I know God wanted me to get saved. He said, I just can't do it. Man, I went off to school. Old tires were on my truck and he called me. He called me when I was up there at school. He said, you going to be home this weekend? I said, yeah. I said, I got to come home and get me some tires from my truck. He said, where are you going to get them? And I told him, I never thought no more about it. I went up there and they said, bring that old truck in here. and said, we're going to put you a good set of tires on there. I said, well, I got to see. He said, put them on. I said, old boy done took care of your tires. That's how high-hearted he was. Just kind. Just kind-hearted give anything away. make a long story short I talked to him two or three times he said God deal with his heart he'd weep he didn't want nobody to know it else he'd cry I never will forget it it was a Friday morning about 7.30 I was at home phone rang his girlfriend said she was crying she said we need help bad I said do what she said we need help bad Said me and Buddy had a fuss. Said he's went in the bedroom, took a 44 and shot himself in the head. 
I preached his funeral. The prayer at McKeon's funeral home in Charlotte. There's a bunch of motorcycle people, all these people around. And that preacher that was at the First Baptist Church was an old man come up to me. He helped me and his mama got him to help. He was still, he was probably 80 then. He said, Preacher, I said, I appreciate what you've done. Told him. Said he even told his mama about God dealing with him. He said, That was a kind, generous boy. He said, I had to tell his mama he died lost because he never turned. Mm. And me and that, that old preacher preached his funeral. All them people standing there. I'd noticed some cry. Come walk me and said, one of them walked up to me and he said, You ain't Marty Watkins. I said, No, I'm not the old Marty Watkins. I'm the new Marty Watkins. Oh boy. I can't believe it. But I got to thinking about it. Some of them old boys. Let me tell y'all something. Some of these that try to act tough and all. They're not near as bad and mean and tough as you think. I wasn't and they ain't. We like to somebody to think it. But I'm going to tell you what. I know a God in heaven. I know the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, He can disturb your life tonight. Disturb your life. Yes, <laughs> oh God <laughs> we've looked at the result God had invited them to come and many mocked the hand grace was extended but they rejected him we've seen the results from the message and the response from the master but notice the message of judgment that came the Bible says in verse 17 to 20, I'm going to go ahead and get it before we get on out of here tonight and let you rest for you be fresh tomorrow. Yeah. All the earth, the water covered the earth just as God said it would. And the Bible says in verse 21 to 24, all the earth perished. And God did not permit anyone to survive to tell us how they perished. You remember when Job lost his family, there came a messenger to him. Remember that? But there came no messenger from those, from these that perished because all the earth perished except those in the ark. The time is coming again when God will deal in judgment with the world. We don't know how, not when, but as sure as, we, as, as the, the flood came, there's coming a day. God's word is going forth. The hand of grace is being extended. God's offering, offering you mercy tonight if you're here and lost. You don't turn away. Don't turn away. You may think you don't need God even though the door of grace is open. There are many who will not go through the door. People will use many excuses. <laughs> the question I preach put to you tonight is if your time would come up tonight, would you perish? Would you perish? David cried over his son, Absalom. I believe in many young, many family. I talked to a fella just the other day. He's talking about his son perishing, dying without God. He said my son's in bad shape. He said he won't. He's not saved. He said. Just a few days left probably. And he seems like he's going to perish without God. Isn't that sad? My, my. What will you do with the day of grace? It was too late in Noah's day. The door was shut for those outside. But thank God, aren't you glad God says come? Amen. Come. Yeah, come and be saved. Heavenly Father, we do pray tonight for the precious, precious Spirit of God to move and disturb a heart tonight. We pray and ask you, God, to put your hand upon us. 
this week. And dear God, I pray for those here tonight maybe sitting here lost and undone without God. Would you disturb that heart? Would you deal with that soul? God, you've extended grace. You've been long-suffering to many. You've been long-suffering to us. You're even long-suffering after we get saved. And dear God, I pray tonight that you'd move in a soul and a heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing, get ready for the invitation.